Why is there a focus on dysfunctional HDL? Well, a lot of this interest started as I'm not as people noticed that uh, HDL is far more important than LDL. I am certainly not the first person to notice that. That's been known. As usual, I get some of the greatest suggestions from viewers and uh, patients. Uh, this one is from Claudio Fazzati. Uh, Claudio is saying, Hi, if you Google dysfunctional HDL, there are some interesting articles that seem serious to me uh, for what I can evaluate, Miss missing the picture concerning HDL role. But they are too difficult for me, so I'm asking for a comment word by an expert. Tom Deck uh, had mentioned earlier, he asked about it earlier, and Tom Deck had uh, mentioned that uh, maybe there wasn't great science around that. There are some really good science uh, components of this question of dysfunctional HDL. So I thought it I would take a few minutes to cover at least um, the image out of one of the articles. But before I do, I'll just make the comment. They've even taken, uh, well, first of all, why is there a focus on dysfunctional HDL? Well, a lot of this interest started as I'm not as people noticed that uh, HDL is far more important than LDL. I am certainly not the first person to notice that. That's been known. People that knew that uh, have uh, focused on doing some interesting research. For example, taking um, uh, pulling HDL out using phoresis uh, blood filtering and actually taking that HDL and uh, putting it into the blood through the vein. That's never worked. They've tried multiple times. Now, uh, why hasn't it worked? It's not entirely clear right now, but there's the assessment that um, it, it um, or there's the uh, several guesses. One of them is that there's too many things piled on that HDL to where you can't really it really can't form the particle that it needs to form. I suspect there's a lot more to it than that. There's also a very good article in Nature magazine about, it's a review of uh, HDL and uh, HDL dysfunction. As part of that article, um, there's a great image here, and I just wanted to go over that image as part of this discussion. Uh, what it does is, is it helps you um, broaden your understanding of all of the different functions of HDL. Uh, yes, Tom, we've covered them in several different videos, but I don't think we've ever had a, an image this good to help uh, people understand all of the things that HDL does. Once you begin to understand all of those different components, then it becomes clearer how there could be significant dysfunctions genetic and otherwise within the HDL uh, process. Now when you when I mention genetic dysfunctions in HDL I need to clarify something. Remember uh, genes are really something for proteins. HDL is ApoA1, the ApoA1 protein, and a bunch of uh, cholesterol fat uh, lipids. So if you're going to have a genetic variation in uh, HDL, it's going to be in ApoA1. But again, as you start looking at the different functions that HDL plays, you can begin to see, ah, yes, if there are genetic variations of ApoA1, and there are, um, then there very well may be uh, some issues around here in terms of dysfunctional HDL. While I'm speaking on this topic, I just got to make one more comment. And I believe it was uh, HDL Milano. I believe there's a, um, a genetic variation of HDL called HDL Milano. And again, uh, please check my facts on this. I'm drawing this out of something a long time ago. I, but I do believe there's a gene genetic variation called HDL Milano. I do believe that it's... Uh, therefore a variation in uh, ApoA1. And I believe these people really lived a long time, maybe pushing 100 years. But again, I would love to see somebody fact check me on that and uh, give us the real story. Uh, now, just what I wanted to show you a minute ago, a, uh, a visual about what all does HDL actually do? 
So as you may recognize this, there's a lot of diagrams that are very similar to this. This is the endothelium or the uh, intima, that single cell layer. This is the bloodstream with the red cells floating around in it. Uh, these are uh, monocytes coming in to deal with this large plaque. This yellow thing under the uh, intima is always going always to be plaque um, when you talk about the stuff that I do. So that's the uh, monocyte receptor. Um, so here, here's a couple of other things to think about. Uh, this has got ApoB100, so this is LDL, and it's getting uh, pulled into the plaque. Well, here you, and this is HDL here, and it's coming into the plaque. It actually does work inside the plaque. So here's one place that it has an impact. HDL is integral to uh, getting the LDL out of the macrophage foam cell. You remember the macrophage foam cell is the cell that's gotten involved in trying to liquefy this plaque. And it does that by uh, releasing packets and pulling some of these uh, pieces of LDL into <clears throat> the macrophage. So the first place is uh, helping the foam cell or the macrophage release um, LDL. Here's another place where uh, HDL has a significant function. You follow this arrow over here and you see it has a lot to do with oxidation. It actually slows down oxidation of LDL. Remember, remember OXLDL? You'll see that in a lot of the labs. <clears throat> OXLDL is the, part, the major part of the, uh, of the plaque itself and again HDL slows that process down. Here's another place where uh, HDL has an impact. It's uh, the adhesion mo molecules, ICAM-1, VCAM-1. Uh, so again, yet another function for HDL. The final function, and you clearly need to know about this, it uh, may ring a bell for some of you. HDL is uh, integral to the process of nitric oxide. Remember, nitric oxide is maybe the major determinant of health um, or maybe the major result of health. It's very much tied up with health of the intima, the intima lining. So multiple places where HDL actually functions uh, both inside and outside of the uh, plaque itself. And oh yes, I almost forgot, it also does reverse transport. It takes that uh, cholesterol from LDL from out here, peripherally, back to the liver so it can be uh, metabolized and burned up. So again, I'm not going to get any deeper than that right now. Hopefully we'll be able to cover this, more deep, this article more deeply and the whole concept of dysfunctional HDL. If you've made it this far, thank you very much for your interest. I just wanted to remind you that if you'd like to get your CIMT, the first uh, stop on the CIMT access tour is in Anaheim, in LA, on September 28th. It's a half day of uh, David Mainz talking about, uh, in person, how we do these, uh, what the uh, advantages are, uh, a little bit more about lifestyle and its impact on health. Uh, Todd and I plan to come in remotely, uh, but the big thing here is getting that CIMT. Um, all of this is like, I think, 245, uh, yeah, 245 bucks to get a half day of this type of information, but more importantly, a, your own CIMT uh, done and read. To get there, you go to cardiorisk.us slash healthy life. Thank you.